Okay, I'm with uh, Michael Fairseek, who lives in Farmington, New Mexico, but who spent a lot of time up here in the UNS near Moon Lake. And, and when he yes. heard we was having this gathering at Moon Lake, he said, sent me, man, this package <laughs> with a bunch of info, with the information on it, man. And I appreciate that. And I seen in this. I'm dumping it off on what I see in this man is Michael's written two books on dowsing. Plus, one, oh, one, I just give you oh, two. Oh, there's two, two books? Yeah, one, yeah. Two books on, a uh, book on Three, dowsing, but then he had a bunch of mining claims up here and he's given me the GPS coordinates. Everything, everything on there. you so, bet. So, Michael, I want to hear your story. Oh, 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 I'll take care of that for you. Start. I want to hear yeah. your Go story. Ahead. <laughs> I'll fix it. You just yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> make copies while you're doing it. There you go. So I want to hear your story of, 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 of your family, the mining claims you yeah. had up here, what was going on in Moon Lake, what you was looking for, um, all that stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. How did you and get it, involved in this? How did you find out about this area? What made you start and, and the years that this was? And right, right. I thought all that through. Uh, we was uranium prospectors. My dad was after World War II, Sander fell swell. And 1967, we come up to Moon Lake, and how my dad heard about the Lost Roads gold mine, I don't know. But while we was up Moon Lake exploring, we went to uh, the old garbage dump, which is west of Moon Lake back in 67. There was a straight road that went up it. The old garbage dump is the west slope of Dry Canyon's Box Canyon. And someone took a big bulldozer at one time, tried digging that out through there. We had all this claimed anyway. It was one mile, by, one mile wide east to west by four miles long north to south in that area. We had hundreds of claims in there back in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s till 94 when they changed it. That's a whole nother story. Uh, we found that where they tried bulldozing away to get to two old Spanish tunnels that went in to the mountain through the slide rock there. And then a little bit west of it, out in the valley floor, a couple hundred feet, was a Spanish shaft that went down. And when I say Spanish, I mean Spanish. The timber's all rotted and everything. Uh, on the Spanish shaft going down, no one tried going into it. It's still the old uh, Spanish timber. It was a couple hundred years old. But the two Spanish tunnels going in, one was to the side, left side. It would be the east side of the slide area now, the old Forest Service garbage dump. Right on the edge of it, there was timbers exposed there and they were offset about three foot apart from the Spaniards and they were rotten out. You could see someone from, and this was 1967, someone from 60, 80 years before that went in, tried getting in, retimbering with timber that was about that old. And back then you could see in on the bottom of that East Spanish tunnel on the bottom of it, you could see in two or three sets of timbers would be the old Spanish timber, a new one is timbered by side by side, but it'd be old, new, old, new, old, new. And on the top, you could see in about six sets of timber with it doing that. And uh, this was before we knew about Dowson. And so we had all that claimed, and we're running all over that mountain looking for ledges and everything, which are far and in between there. It's all glacier slide rock, three, four, five hundred thousand feet deep wow. in some places. My dad worked at a coal mine there that I worked at later, but they had the processing plant shut down. And there's three coal mines waiting on that processing plant to get going so they could load the coal onto the trains and ship it out. And it was built on an old uh, coal mining area from back early 1900s. And they ran a main water line up there and they were still using it back for that long and it broke. And this is a mile length and wow. they didn't know where it broke anywhere on that water line. We's down for one week. That's when I first started mine in 75. 
We was down for one week waiting for that water line. I mean, that mine looked spotless <laughs> from shovel and everything. <laughs> we had to do all that dead work. But finally, a guy at work says, hey, guys, we're just wait a minute here. And he got my dad and he went down. He got his dowsing rod out. And it wasn't one like this. He just used brass rods. And he's a water dowser. And he yeah. just walked the pipeline. He, he doused the pipelines out like I teach in my book here. I walk you all through this. He, wa he followed the pipelines out. And then he come back and he followed the water. And where the water was the most, they dug down and that's where that leak was. Well, my dad went, whoa. So we was living on a small farm in Spring Glen, south of Helper, Utah. And my dad started experimenting with our water lines there and the septic system sewer line. And then we started burying copper cables all through the farm and advanced our way up to where we worked out the physics on it. And uh, I'll get back into the books and the physics on that later because we'll get into moonlight and keep going. So we found that out and experimented at home until we knew we could work it and we could find gold with it. But we were still beginning. We didn't understand about outside edge, center, and approach edge when you're dowsing up to it. Mm -hmm. And we learned all that up here at Moon Lake, dowsing wow. on these fissures. Now, my dad <clears throat> flew over this in the 80s when he had a plane but in the 1974, he flew over that with a friend of mine's mother who had a plane. And he saw what I didn't know, what I could only see on ground, but he saw from the air where the fault line starts at Moon Lake. And if you look on Google map, you can see where it starts down close to the Twin Pots on the Indian Reservation. And there's about eight faults that will go up to the edge of the mountain range here. And it looks like rivers running side by side, but they're not. They're fault lines. And then it, as you're coming down elevation, it actually makes steps. And it drops them down and down. Ah. We doused them out. And it took us about a year to find out which ones were good and which ones had the silver and gold in it. And I'm giving everybody everything I got on this so maybe someone will pick up where we left off because we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this through 30 years of core drilling. Uh, the gold is there. Big corporations will tell you it's not because you don't have volcanics that surface through there and that's where the problem lies. This is one of them where the volcanics come up to the surface but they don't break through just the steams yep. come up. And up there where that fault line system is, it's buried three to a thousand feet deep with glacier slide, yeah. where no one can dig to it, but you get next to that south rim on the Box Canyon. That's where the Spanish went in on the upper. Uh, the further you go west, the more gold you get on it. And that's where the Spanish went in was the two furthest west fissures. And after that, we figured out, figured out how to uh, bows up to the edge. It'll make a left-hand 90-degree turn, unless you're reverse polarity. I know one person, it'll turn to the right instead of left. Everything's the same, but the turning's the opposite. When you hit the approach edge, it'll make a left-hand 90-degree turn. And you go past it, and you get towards the center, and it'll start helicoptering. And it'll so helicopter. Do dowsing rod. Dowsing rod. It'll start helicopter in a left hand 90 degree turn. You get to the outside edge, and it will make a right hand 90 degree turn. And this is where dowsing for depth went wrong hundreds of years ago. There was a, in dowsing history, there's a guy by the name of the bishop, mm -hmm. and he would always locate the wells, water wells, good but he couldn't tell the depth because he would face away from the center and douse away from the center trying to douse the depth. In dowsing this motor dowsing that I'm teaching you here with physics, and it's all physics, there's no magic in this. Everything's explained and 
So, so those people that say that ah, that's witchcraft, that's messing with the deal. Well, you're some, saying, no, you're I saying, won't. In fact, I won't dial's graves. We put rest in peace on our grave for a reason. So you're yep. saying that this is all off of physics. This all this is physics. I am not explanation to this. It's not. Yes, magic. yes. You can't prove map dowsing, you can't prove pendulum dowsing, but you can prove this dowsing. Okay. This is the only one you can prove. This is the only dowsing you can gauge what grade it is. On low grade, when you get in the center on a vein, a trace might make just a left-hand turn on the center. When you're dowsing low grade, it might make six slow helicopter spins. When you're dowsing medium grade, it'll spin so fast your eye can follow it spinning, but see, I mean, that just spins free. But you gotta have that, because I'm using gravity as a gauge on this. Uh -huh. You gotta have a gauge to know what you're doing. Uh, it'll spin on low grade, about six helicopter, medium grade, it'll spin so fast your eye can follow it, but you cannot count it. Really? On high grade, it'll spin so fast your eye cannot follow it spinning. Really? It'll look just like a helicopter's braid, blade spinning yeah. in flight. Wow. That's why I call it helicopter. There is no set dowsing language. We have a hard time talking to each other and that. And since I'm teaching physics on dowsing, a good one third of this book is just language because we got to know what we're talking about. So, so real quick, if somebody wants to get this book, how do they get it? It's for sale on uh, Google, Amazon, iTunes, uh, Bam Books A Million, uh, Barnes & Noble, anywhere you can get a book. It's for sale. Page Publishing is my publisher. They're, okay. they're a Christian publisher. And I sought them on purpose because I don't want any witchcraft yeah, hooked yeah. up with me in this book or my dad's legend. Because right. this oh. is part him. And I only believe in good karma. And there's people that will use this for evil. People are gonna be using this to steal, and I know. And I tell you about this free spinning thousand rod. You gotta treat this like a gun before we go any further in the Moon Lake. Because if I don't get this out, this is the most important part. You cannot let a child play with this. My kids couldn't touch this growing up. I mean, once in a while I'd let them grab it and I'd be real close to them. If they fall or whatever, oh, this yeah. will kill them. Yeah. Yep. They can't control it, so you have to lock this up just like a loaded firearm and treat it that way. Don't leave it out when you go camping or whatever. Watch your children with this because they will get hurt. So, so it looks like that you've kind of made that out of a bicycle spoke. Wheel. Yes, you yes. Let, let's talk it? about. Do yes, you, I, I you give. Talk you, how to make one yes, of these I got a book? chapter in there how okay. to make it, how to build it. I'll walk you through. I'll walk you through the 10 chapters in it, and then we can do that real short. Okay, I got the introduction and all that. Chapter one is the theory of thousand relativity to atomic theory of matter. And what that is, it's telling you the physics on thousand and how it's working. Atoms put out an electromagnetic microwave band free frequency, and every atom, every element has a different frequency. You get like a thousand, maybe 10,000 atoms of gold together. That elemental microwave band frequency of gold bands together. It'll make one elemental magnetic flux line. And that's what we're dowsing with on top of the sawed object. We're dowsing long distance beyond where, because gravity will pull the elemental magnetic flux lines from weight. They do have weight to them. Uh, they'll extend out so far and they bow, just like when you put a um, bar magnet on the ground and you sheet of make paper on it and do the iron filings and you yeah. can see the flux lines. Well, yeah. that's the same exact thing, but it doesn't show you how they come out and then they'll go back to the center. The elemental magnetic flux lines do not bow. They're like light. They go straight. Now, they'll start from the center where it bows out and follow the same path, but they'll be in a straight path and they won't bow up, they won't bow down, they'll just be straight. We douse 30 to 100 miles from the vehicle. I douse Moon Lake from right here, no problem, my car driving up and down here. Mm. 
and I can pick up Bernal from here. Really? There's only two places the UN is that you're going to get any gold mineralization that's worth looking for, and that's Dry Canyon, Vernal area, and Moon Lake, Dry, Dry Creek anyway, and Dry Canyon, Moon Lake over into Rock Creek area because it does go over there because we had a major uplift fault on the west slope of uh, Dry Creek, Creek Box Canyon. But anyway, we'll get back into this book before we get back up there real quick because it'd probably be better so they could follow me when I talk about the thousand. And then we got magnetism theories relativity to the theory on dowsing. And the reason I'm going to take a drink while we're talking. The reason we're doing that is because not everything, I'm a certified electrician, and I think you are too. Yeah, me you, yeah. man. We're brothers. <laughs> we're talking eddy currents here. <laughs> Electrical engineering. Yeah, well, there we are. Yeah, yeah. But not everything in magnetism with electricity has to do with dowsing, and I run you through that, the parts that do and the parts that don't. And then after that, before you can start dowsing lessons, and I run you through dowsing lessons, so one day you'll be able to dow just like I do. I'll show you how to build and maintain a dowsing rod just like this one. This is a 10-speed bicycle racing sprocket. Your regular bicycle sprocket has four to six bearings on top. A racing one has 10, maybe more bearings on the top and the bottom. And so it'll spin real easy. Uh, the others, they get too much drag. I'm gonna clean mine real quick because I dropped it in the dirt out there. That's something you gotta do too. When it gets like that, you don't wanna douse with it. Stop, clean it. Okay. And I'll show, in my book, I'll show you how to do it. I don't know if we'll have time on tape. It takes about five minutes to clean and field. You just unscrew the bottom bolts, drop, drop your ball bearings in a bowl, wipe everything with a towel, blow, put it back together clean, and then you adjust it up to where it's tighter than when you run it on a, a regular bicycle because we run it dry. Don't use oil. Don't use oil. You've got to have metal to metal contact. Now on the, that's on the dowsing rod to build it. I run you through how you grind it down on one end to fit your palm, but you don't want it to be rubbing. See, I'm almost rubbing here. Uh -huh. You don't want to grind that rim down too small to have your, because you have to have free turn all the time on that. You don't want hindrance. And I run you through the parts to buy, extra parts, two nuts, flat washers. And that's a stainless steel settling welding rod. You can use regular steel if you want, but I like stainless because it don't rust up on me. And this is important. I have right now platinum on it. And we made a mistake of our lives. I never bought a platinum dowsing load until a couple of years ago when I was reading reports about my Lapata Mountain Range, Colorado gold claims that I'm working on. They got platinum there, and I thought the only place we had platinum my whole life was up in South Dakota and Montana. I didn't think we had it. We got it here, but it's low grade. Moon Lake's got platinum in it, huh? and so does Vernal. A lot of places got platinum, but it's not high grade. The only place that's really concentrated, I guess, is Northern California, that one creek where they get big platinum nuggets out of it. And in Alaska. Alaska, yeah. You want to make sure your dowsing rod load is pure. I use, for gold, I use a Canadian maple leaf, one tenth ounce gold coin, and that's four niners pure on the fine. And this platinum is three niners pure, but it's three one gram bars. Uh, that's close enough. It's one tenth of a gram shy from weight, so I just bring it back a hair. You want to, because we're using, gravity is a gauge. If you're dowsing with like this, you're not going to gauge anything. It's going to turn, and then so what? It turned. There's gold there, but then, then what? You don't know anything after that. When we raise this up in the air, you're testing the strength of what you're dowsing down there with 
the gravity. Now you got gold and I'm, you got platinum in your gold? No, never mind. I told you. Remember how I told you that's? Yeah, yeah. You, okay, I forgot. You ain't got nothing. That's me. It's holding itself. That's, now see, I just proved to you right there. I'm glad I did that. That just proved why you have to have this clean. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you tape after I clean it at the very end, come back for a re, okay. re on that, and we'll show you where you can't hold that in the air like that. Okay. See how I can do that? Yeah. So if it's when that's clean, you ain't going to do that twist. unless you got a lot of gold out there or platinum. And then that's how you're testing it. When you come up to the edge, you want to keep it up too because it helps on the elemental magnetic flux lines the way they make that curve coming out because remember dowsing on top of it we're using elemental magnetic flux lines dowsing at depth i mean at, at length we're using elemental magnetic electromagnetic microwave band frequencies getting tongue tied so, there so is that the ghost signal you're you're getting the pole back down and you're picking up the outer edges yeah. So you're saying the outer edge is in center. Okay. Well, actually, actually, yeah. When with this, when you're using gravity, without gravity, your outside edge and approach edge, you will not dial them correct. Okay. You got to have that gravity in there to get it. Okay. That's what I should have said. Without gravity, you're going to be off. Okay. And you're centering. It's going to think you got, you're going to think you got high grade when you got, you know, low grade. If you ain't got that raised in the air, you always have to have your gauge going. And then, oh, a couple more chapters and then we'll get back into Moon Lake. I don't want to run all your tapes out on just me. And then I talk about the dowsing rod load and the purity. But in dowsing, you have to improvise. If you only got a gold wedding ring and you want to see if something's got gold, yeah. But don't bet your life on it, you know what I mean? Go and recheck it when you got your good gold dowsing load. And then I run you through hands-on dowsing theory and practice, which I ran you through some of the theory here. In the practice, I start you out with water lines. And what you'll do on a water line, and this will work from, from everything out on depth dowsing, but we'll start from water line and you can use it on even treasure condensed. On a water line, you walk up to the water line, you get the left hand 90 degree turn. And then you carefully have to step backwards while you're facing the center. If not, you're gonna pick up something behind you or you're gonna be picking up them flux lines that are way out there dropping back into the earth. You wanna be picking up the center. It's the most powerful part of the whole thing you're dowsing. Okay. In the center, the elemental magnetic flux lines are stacked real tight together. And as you get towards the edge, they start spacing out, spacing out, and spacing out. If you get a magnet and you, you split them and did that, it would do the same thing. I don't call it <clears throat> north and south pole like you do in electricity because it confuses you way too much. I call it positive and negative. In Dowson, the Earth is uh, negative and the air is positive. And we're using static electricity, not line electricity, current electricity. Uh, that's, that's where we're reading it through. Kind of like Tesla said he wanted, but he went way out in left field wanted to run electricity through the air and all that but we're working on that same principle we're working on that gap in between the ground where it's coming out and the air it's coming out till it hits this right here and you have to look at this too you can get blockage in this and that's what throws a lot of people uh, blockage can be anything maybe you got a thousand foot of something real thick that's in between you and it you're not going to pick it up probably uh, blockage could be something that's the same element, but it could be a bigger load of, say, low grade, and you got a high grade over here. That blockage of the low grade could keep you from getting to that high grade till you get past the low grade. Mm. There's different kinds of blockage, as I explained in here. You have to work your way around the blockage. If you don't, you're going to stump yourself. And then after we talk about the blockage and all that, I teach you how to douse out the ore veins. 
And on ore veins, I found four, four major gold deposits driving down the highway mm. that I've staked in my lifetime here. And without driving down the highway, I wouldn't have found them in Dowson. And, and so you, but you, I, I warn everybody on this, be the passenger. I mean, I do it, but I'm dowsing out of my peripheral vision and that. If you're beginning, you're going to be watching that dowsing. You're going to have an accident. Be the passenger. Let someone else do the driving. But I drive in dows, which is so kind of illegal. Have you, have you proven, though, have you gone and done some panning or something there and proven that y y it was right? You did have gold there? At Moon Lake? Well, anyway, where you oh, yeah, yeah, Moon okay. Lake. Oh, yeah, we've uh, in our tunnel. We had we had one tunnel above our core drill sites on the west slope of Dry Canyon. We had one tunnel above it, and we knew it had a lot of silver in there and a little bit of gold. But we was getting assays, we was getting to where we just got we lost that tunnel two times and had to go and redo it through glacier slide. And we got just to the ledge at about 250, 300 foot deep, somewhere in that area. And we lost it the last time, but we was getting the ledge mixed up with the glacier slide, but it was a square ledge in that. 222 ounces of silver a ton and one tenth ounce of gold a ton wow. was our highest. And then the others, we averaged them. There's like 20 ounces of silver a ton. So we proved it there. <clears throat> I just proved this recently in front of a group and everybody. Uh, have you ever been to the DD gold mine by uh, Central City, Black Hawk, Colorado? Mm -hmm. Central City boasts being the world's richest square mile, which it was. But you got the DD mine there. In 2019, I went to see the Pikes Peak hill climbs, and I was up there, and I was coming back. I drove up Black Hawk, and then I come back, and I was going to drive back down Central City and down. And right by coming out of Central City, there's a big sign there. I think it's for Central City going across the road or something. I doused the highest grade I've doused in my life. Mm. The dowsing rod was spinning so fast that the arch started from really? a downward wobble in it. Yeah. Wow. And I got this on, uh, it's not good tape. It's them ones you put in for your car accident and that type. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got it on that, but I don't know how good it's going to show. It'll show it, but not real good detail. And I thought, wow. And I drove a little bit further and I seen DD gold panning and mine tour. So I hit the skids and left black marks even on the road, backed up, drove down. And I had a piece of uh, Teller and Gold specimen that I just found a couple hours before up Chicago Creek. And uh, my dowsing rod is on the dash, and I pulled down in there, and it was kind of full. And the owner walked up to me, or the manager, Mr. Hill, and he goes, do you got a reservation? I says, no, I seen your sign, I'd like to take a tour. He asked me about dowsing, and he liked my gold specimen. He said, yeah, that looks good. He said, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I'll comp you tour if you'll lead our, our uh, tour group in, I'll comp you. Come back in an hour. I said, okay. So we get back there, and nobody knows nothing about dowsing but me. And he has me taking the lead. And going in, there's a, he, call it, he says the miners call it black horse tail. But you got that little thing where you have black and different minerals and that to be mixed with it and a little bit of gold, but it's not your real good stuff. And the old timers would follow it. But this old guy was smart. He went next to the sheer fault and uh, knew that he'd get good stuff there, which he did. And he followed that horse's tail all the way in 600 foot. Mm -hmm. And then he hit stuff that's 14 ounces of gold per ton wow. on the average and even higher in spots. Mm -hmm. And I'm hey, leading him in there. I'm, I'm, I'm leading him in there anyway. 
And I kept telling them, there's nothing on the left wall, nothing on the left wall. And we're about halfway in. I kept telling them, just a little bit in the right. And he stops and Mr. Hill says, yeah, he's right and blah, blah, blah. We get in there at the end. He doesn't say nothing. And I thought that was it. Then the thousand rod started that with me walking with not as much power in it. Because when you're driving, you got all the other forces going through it, the car turning, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. It puts more static electricity. It goes through you and dowsing around. It was spinning so fast that the tour group stopped the tour because they forgot him. I just kept asking me question after question after question. I looked at Mr. Hill because I knew we were running late with just the dowels and he's on time. And he says, okay, Mike, you got two minutes. And I give him the lowdown on what you get, got there in two minutes, and they understood. And then he says, I want to show you something, Mike. Because at first, when we got there, I had it raised up because I wanted to eliminate the low grade on the side. You know, and I'd drop it down lower, but I mean, I'd have it way up. So I'd just get the high grade at the end of the tunnel. And I kept telling it was ahead of us, ahead of us, till we hit it. And... It was bending it up because wow. we had high grade above us wow. and it was helicopter. So I put it back down to my normal, it's about that elevation. I'll give it to you in the book, the angles on it. It's about that right there. See it freed up a little bit where it'll turn that stuff, didn't catch it. That's why you want to make sure this is clean. Put a baggie around it if you're getting a lot of dirt. and But don't leave it in there because it'll get moisture and fog up. I bent it down, it was doing the same thing down. And we went downstairs and looked up and they left, instead of mining it out, they left a great big, about as wide as this wall here, wall to wall pyrites of many species. And they left it dug out, but it had that 14 ounces of gold. You ain't gonna see the gold in it. And then down at the bottom, they had like a quartzite fine grain. It was gray. And he lets everybody chip out there because it's got gold in it. And when they chip it out, they get to fill a little bag with it and take it outside and do panning outside. They teach you how. I taught our class how to pan because I'm a pro. Uh, when I got outside and I looked at that, it, I could see fine gold, you know, with my loop. I could see fine gold in it. So everybody gets to go home with that. Go check that mine out. It's the best tour you'll ever go on. Huh? It's it's a gem. All the others are kind of a gimmick. This one ain't. Yeah. It gets you right in there. Huh. Okay, we'll get back into the book. Yeah, I've, I've proved it in front of people, but we proved it up here with our core drill. Uh, another reason with the core drilling, too, we were the only exploration company in the United States that got a core drill with no bonding. Wow. Because we did not use steel casing, we used environmentally safe mud, and we just lined our drill hole after the end core barrel would go down from the wobble and a little bit of the drill still and the caking of the mud. That's why we could only get like 300 foot deep, and after that you get too much wobble, we just lose the holes. It's good for 100, and after that you're fighting and have to re-ream. But the United States Forest Service uh, recognized our dowsing as legitimate exploration tools. Really? We got to put that tunnel up on top of the mountain because our dowsing, really? we proved it to them through our assays with core drilling. That's how we got advanced from, from that uh, west, west uh, Moon Lake, Dry Canyon, south wall. We got advanced from our initial core drill in there about six holes further north and we did it almost to the Brown Cut Ducks Creek. But we'd, we'd reclaim each hole. And after we get done, because of no steel casing, it's real simple. You just fill it up with, with sand and gravel and then cap the top with cement. And no hole, no sulfides coming up. And they like that. When we core drilled, we had a, a complete water sealed system. No water touched the ground. Wow. And we got to do that because of our thousands. So, yeah, it, it's been proved. It'll be proven more when I start teaching. I got YouTube thousand training videos that are coming out. I what's, got, your, what's your channel going to be? 
The Art of Gold Dowsing. All right. Yeah. Now, in my book, it's got a subtitle, but we don't put it on front. It's separating science from superstition, because ah. that's just what I'm doing in this book. Okay. Yeah. Because I've seen a lot of it that's like, okay, but who am I to say who's right and who's yeah, wrong? Yeah. But I can say what's physics and what ain't. That I can say. Other, the mind works in mysterious ways, you know. And then I get you down, dowsing down the highway, and, and after that I teach you how to douse gold plaster deposits because, and I'll even train you have to, how you have to douse in and out of it because the gold spread out itself can cause blockage to where it'll stop you from picking up the higher grade pockets. But if you're always coming in from the outside in, you can pick them up. Huh. Sometimes you can be in a good gold deposit where, or a plaster deposit where it's spread out even, and it'll be like dead on the inside because everything's canceled and everything, you know, it's balanced out all the way around you. So there's nothing to really pull you because it's all canceling. So the only way you can get pockets in a place like that, if it does that, if a dowse is dead inside, is you got to keep dowsing from around the circle around it, from the outside in, outside in, on the hot spots. And after that, dowsing caches, stashes, and lost treasure. And before you even start on that, I send you over to Terry's territory because just like a business plan, Location, location, location. Before you go out dowsing for treasures because everything's condensed in one spot, you need research, research, yeah. research. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, dowsing from a boat. I've only done it one time up here at Moon Lake. North of Moon Lake, you walk around Brown Ducks Creek before you hit Lake Fork, you know, the end there at Moon Lake. There's a little pocket where someone dug into a, a quartz silver vein. It's like a marble quartz. And I did assay it. It's got a little bit of silver, but nothing worth, no gold, nothing worth even looking at. I can't remember if it's a trace or down the ten thousandths. But it goes clear up Lake Fork Mountain and it cuts down through the lake and it goes up the monster side of Moon Lake, the, the east side, and... Uh, what do you mean the monster side? Where the, the monster, monster side, is? That's, yeah, that's, that's where I've heard from. You know, I've been up here since 1967 Boom. to 2002. I never heard about that monster. I'm always out there in a little 10-foot aluminum ball. <laughs> yeah, I tried dowsing there. It would work but not quite as I wanted it to, and it was low grade, and we was up so, like a couple hundred feet, because the lake was full, you know, above that silver vein. But I proved that it can be doused in fresh water down to a couple hundred feet deep. And then from 100, page 105 to, with the illustrations, because these illustrations mean more in the words in a lot of places, to 186, is all terminology yep. and also got you in I'll give you yeah I'll give you a book of that after I got 15 of them to give out but without terminology how are we going to communicate you can't go into a parts store and say I want the witch call it that goes on the doodad you got it in the stock or you got to order it in we all got to be on the same page so I took what was common terminology and used that and then no one had physics terminology. So I did just use what sounded scientific that matched the terminology and named it myself. I know that sounds narcissistic, but I couldn't have wrote the book without it. I mean, how am I gonna teach the world how to douse? Because that's my, that's my goal. I don't care making money. This book only sells for $14.95. I make three bucks a book. I could have made 40, 50 bucks a book. That's not my goal. I can't take this to the grave with me. Yeah. I have to leave it behind. Same with Moon Lake. I have to leave behind everything I had so I rest in peace. Yeah. You know, and it's good karma. It's gonna help me now to where I got weight lifted off my back because I've got two properties going now that's 
pretty good. <laughs> Better than what I had up here. Uh, I mean, I can get to them on the surface. Yeah. That good. I don't so have to core. So deep it was. Yeah, the core to. drilling. Yeah, after core drilling the tunnel, and boy, we lost that tunnel two times. That was deep. And there's a little more to Moon Lake. I don't know. If I'll talk to you about it. I don't want to divulge it right now yeah. because it maybe should just go to certain people that's that's put in their time looking for it because to me that should go to them instead of someone just starting out because yeah. i think i've got the two locations on the buckskin map figured out cool but i i'll leave it up to you and and a couple others what goes public on that what doesn't and if you don't hear about it it's all baloney okay <laughs> <laughs> i got a cave i'm gonna look at tomorrow though cool that one i'll let you know and that one i'm afraid i got you're not supposed to go up there and i went up two times two days in a row on both sides of the lake i went up to our old claims forest service knew about it and dogged me a little bit and then i seen you pulling through and a ranger come through before that and that that thing you got star on your truck yeah. oh god here's the sheriff now i'm going to jail <laughs> because the day before that I climbed the dam yeah. you can't go past it no trespassing but they got like rocks you know kind of ledge yeah. I, I climbed up it and I was going to try to go to that cave that's on the back side of that ledge because it dowels is gold and platinum huh? so I got to go see but if I find something there uh, my karma and that probably I'm the wrong guy to find it but I'll stop and bring in the right people you know the archaeologists and let yeah. the archaeologists decide who they bring in but i was trying to get through that and i seen some uh trees you know were lined up well there might be a trail i can and i got up there and it was like about that steep uh, no way i'm yeah. gonna try that and then yeah. there's ledges down below it no so i so, heard i heard that there was some other people that was doing some core drilling up higher up on the uh now the old paint mine yeah you had me going there they did put in a couple reverse circulation holes i remember that now too and you saying that someone found 30 inches with some silver and that and that you hear what i didn't because the paint mine partnership and my family used the same road that the paint mine partnership ah. put in from yeah. the road going to Moon Lake Dam just before the dam that says road closed. That was for us and the Peyton Man Partnership uh, and the Forest Service yeah. and the utility. Uh, so what I always thought you was talking about, and I was wrong, I thought you was talking about where you turn off and go on the Indy land and then get back onto the Forest Service. No, no, okay. no, no. Yeah, you're, you're right here at Moon Lake. Right there, right yeah, you the go Atlantis. Dry Canyon and then right as soon as you hit the bottom of Dry Canyon where the mountain on the south side hits Dry Canyon, it heads north. And then we was running the old uh, electric line, Forest Service line that ran straight up to the slide for our area there. We had our original camp up in there. And with them lodge pole pines and that, everybody felt eerie because he's reading all that about the Spaniards and Indians getting dead and that in nighttime. And I don't know if I should go public in that because of my book. I've had three near-death experiences. I know what's ahead of us when we die. Wow. You can delete this if you want. I'll go ahead and tell you, it. You tell me if you want to delete it or not. No, I'll leave it up to you. Okay. If you think it sounds bad promoting the book. Okay. Uh, because then people think, yeah, he's all whacked out. Okay. I was up Moon Lake, and I was off work. The coal mine shut down 82 to 86. And, you know, I had to take seismograph jobs, whatever I could get. But I was up Moon Lake camping with my brother up there at the slide area in his little camp trailer. And we got in a family squabble because I was always, I'd skip work and I'd turn down Saturdays and that to go 
bus butt up there and he was working all over time. You need to let me work some. And anyway, that squabble got going. But he got mad and left me up there because my dad was going to come up that next day or the day after. And that was fine. I had stuff. I said, go ahead and go. I'll finish, you know, working on that. We was putting that trench in to get the tunnel going. And I'm up there sleeping at night alone. And I had the window open because I just felt safer that way because you feel eerie and I want to see outside. And the stars and that. and I could see light like just a little bit of reflection coming off the window and that. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw my grandma there. Huh. She just died. Yeah. And I was the closest to her. She knew. So she come to let me know. It's okay. Don't look for God. Be a good Samaritan and practice good karma. But I think it kind of settled her grief and my grief because I didn't want her to go in a rest home. Yeah. My wife, she couldn't take it, so that's where she had to die. And I probably should end with that, you know, on the ghost story. Well, Michael, man, I appreciate you sharing your story with us. I appreciate you, the information oh, yeah, you sent yeah. me. Oh, yeah. this, this ain't it. We'll do more. You, you right. find some place that needs some dows, and I, I don't charge for dows, and I dows other people's property for free. I'm going to be starting dows and lessons down in Prescott, Arizona on my gold claims there and by Durango, Colorado on my gold claims there where I can take people out right on the spot. Uh, I've, um, got, I've got some things in Durango so when you get to Durango let me know because I'll come down and visit you because I got some things I'd like you to check out for me on the mystery glyphs in Durango. Mystery glyphs? Mystery glyphs. That'd be fun. Yep. That would be fun. <laughs> I'm losing my hair now. <laughs> well, that's it, Michael, man. That's a wrap, and I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you.